Hello everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, here to do top 5 anticipated fall winter films for the year 2015, and I am here joined by... I am WWE Fan 0599 and Gippy Kai A Mother Pooper. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Kevin, if you guys know my YouTube channel, Kevin Falk, um, nice to be here, great to be back on Tony's channel, and yeah, Caden. Hey guys, it's me, Kaden, aka the Kid of Awesome, and uh, I am here joining Tony because he was very um, nice to let me join this, and I am very excited um, to talk about my top five, especially my number five. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last person to introduce himself, Adam Hashko. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. So you guys, of course, um, what we're going to do here is that we're going to talk about our honorable mentions, and then we're going to go around and do our five through one. So my honorable mentions, I have a ton of them, so I'm not going to really go into details with the honorable mentions. I'm just going to kind of straight up say what they are. Steve Jobs, Black Mass, Crimson Peak, Sicario, Daddy's Home, The Walk, Legend, In the Heart of the Sea, The Martian, the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, Bridge of Spies, Pan, The Hateful Eight, and The Revenant. I have uh, 20 honorable mentions. I'm like the king when it comes to this. Okay, first off, uh, The Transporter Refueled. I know everybody's questioning me right now. Uh, uh, Black Mass, uh, The Maze Runner, The Secret tr uh, tr Trials, I think that's what it's called. The Green Inferno, The, the Green Inferno. Hotel Transylvania 2, The Martian, Pan, Knock Knock, The Walk, Steve Jobs, Crimson Peak, Goosebumps, Bridge of Spies, The Last Witch Hunter, I know, question me all you want, uh, The Peanuts Movie, The Night Before, the Good Dinosaur, Victor Frankenstein, In the Heart of the Sea, and Joy. In no particular order, Pawn Sacrifice, uh, Pan, Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, uh, The Walk, In the Heart of the Sea, The Good Dinosaur, Trumbo, The Peanuts Movie, um, Snow Den, The Night Before, Victor Frankenstein, um, Burnt, Goosebumps, Hotel Transylvania 2, The Martian, and Free Hell. Okay, I have 28. I don't know my chin. Holy! <laughs> um, uh, four, five of them are actually in order, because I did create a top ten, but I'm just going to just name them up. Okay, so, here are my honorable mentions, in some, and most of them are known for two order. I'll just name those that are not in two order. The Visit, Bridge of Spies, Knock Knock, Pan, The Green Inferno, Steve Jobs, The Peanuts Movie, Spectre, whatever you say, it, The Revenant, Joy, Free Held, The Night Before, Trumbo, Burnt, Major Under the Scorch Trials, Trials, whatever, A Hold of Transylvania 2, The Martian, Victor Frankenstein, Pawn Sacrifice, Sicario, In the Heart of the Sea, Snowden, uh, in Black Mass, um, and the ones in my 10 for 6, even though this is a top 5, my number 10 is Goosebumps, number 9 is Creed, number 8 is The Good Dinosaur, number 7 is The Hunger Games, Mocha G Part 2, and number 6 is The Walk. Alright, I have 5 honorable mentions. I may have self-limited on this one. Um, Creed, The Hateful Eight, The Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 2, Pan, and The Peanuts Movie. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to our top five. So, my number five is going to be Creed. Now, I haven't seen the Rocky sequels, but I have seen the original Rocky. I love the original Rocky so much. Definitely one of the best movies ever made. And with the idea of this being about of Apollo's son really intrigues me and fascinates me. We get to see what the life of his own son when it comes to boxing. We get to see Rocky 
returning, being pretty much a mentor to Apollo Creed's son. So I think that looks really interesting. It looks like it'll have the raw drama that the Rocky films are known for, and the boxing scenes, I'm sure, are going to be really interesting to watch. And it's just good to see Rocky back. I love the trailer so much. So that is my number five. Alrighty, my number five is Legend. The trailer to Legend, I loved. That new trailer was awesome. One of the best trailers I've seen this year. I can't wait to see this film. It's Tom, it's Tom Hardy times two. He's playing not one, but two characters in this film. And it's going to be awesome to see. I love me some gangster films. And, you know, this seems like it could be a great movie. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, I think this could be really good. And also the kid from uh, Kingsman, the Secret Service, insert name here. But uh, he should be really good in this as well. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Legend. Legend should be a great film. So, Legend is my number five. Okay, before I get to my number five, I do want to say that Legend was an honorable mention that I forgot, um, and I didn't know Taron Edgerton was in it, so that's awesome. My number five is The Hateful Eight. It looks awesome. It's Quinn Tarantino, and of course you got Sam Jackson, which is going to be great. Walton Goggins, Boyd Crowder himself, which I think is going to be awesome. The cast looks great, and it looks like a Western movie that is very unconventional. It's a lot of fun. It's not going to be, you know, it's modern-day dialogue, but in a Western movie, and that's what Quentin Tarantino is so great at. He does unconventional dialogue, but it works so well, and I think The Hate Play is going to be another great movie from Quentin Tarantino. Still have yet to see Dango Unchained, but I'm hyped for this movie, and it looks awesome. I can't wait for The Hate Play. Okay, so my number five... Yeah, here we go. Okay, it's a movie that I swear to God, um, that I seriously swear to God, Kevin's laughing, that none of you know is actually going to be a Fathom event for one night. It's a, it's an actual movie that was made last year, but it's not coming out in the U.S. It's going to be released on one. It's going to be in released in theaters uh, for one night by Fathom Events. And that is a documentary slash concert film called Roger Waters the Wall. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. So let me explain myself. If you don't know what this movie is, because I assume barely any of you guys know who this is, unless what you know is that? unless you know what the band Pink Floyd is. Uh. Okay. Okay, so hang on one second. Okay. <laughs> That's annoyed the shit out of me with this. <laughs> okay. So Earlier this year, um, one of my friends told me about this band called Pink Floyd that I've never heard of before. And they told me that I should listen to The Wall first, which is a concept album from the 70s that uh, Pink Floyd did when they were having a lot of issues with like business and stuff. The uh, lead member, uh, Roger Waters, who later retired from the band, uh, basically was having a lot of you know personal issues and stuff. And basically, they made this uh, album called The Wall, which I have in vinyl, which is 50 bucks, by the way, because it's a double album. And <laughs> it's an amazing album. It was made into a movie. And I literally actually just listened to it for the first time. Uh, well, not the first time. It took me like that 12th time or something. Like, I dubbed it all the way through. I love it that much. It is just an amazing album. And basically what this movie is, it's a documentary basically about kind of like the making of it and what Roger Waters went through making it and all his personal issues. And there's also like an interview with him and the drummer of the band. And basically it's also about the tour that he went on performing the album from 2010 to 2013. And it's going to show live concert footage. And the cinematography looks amazing. Some people say, it's, in the trailer, they say it's the greatest tour of all time, and it's going to show basically the, the concert and then also the whole interviews and stuff like that. It's going to be released at Fab Events on September 29th, and it's, all, and it's almost three hours, so yeah. All right, my number five is The Night Before. Um, now, I loved um, This is the End in the Interview. I know I'm in the minority for the interview, but I did love that movie. I love the interview. And this movie just looks like another great movie to me. Um, I just have really high expectations for it. I love, like I said, I love Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg. Uh, it just looks like another hilarious comedy from them, so yeah. So, my like number music. four is going to be Spectre! Da-na, 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 da-na,
Yeah, James Bond. How can I not have at least a, a James Bond movie in my top five? I am really looking forward to Spectre. I'm so glad James Mendes is coming back because I fucking love Skyfall. It is my favorite out of the Daniel Craig James Bond movies. Uh, Skyfall is just amazing to me. One of the best films of 2012 to me. I don't know if Spectre will be as good as Skyfall. We'll just have to see. But I'm definitely looking forward to this movie. It looks really interesting. Ralph Fiennes taking the place of M. That's going to be cool to see how the movie's going to handle that. But it looks like we'll get a new Bond girl in here. The action sequences look riveting. You also got Christoph Waltz and you got Dave Bautista. You've got a great cast here. And the cinematography in general just looks so beautiful. So Spectre really excites me. Can't wait to see Daniel Craig for the fourth time as James Bond. It looks like it'll be another exciting entry into the James Bond franchise. So yeah, that is my number four. My number four is Creed. Uh, Creed seems like it's going to be a great movie. You know, uh, Michael B. Jordan, my man. Uh, you know, he just seems like he'll be great as Apollo Creed's son. You know, I think this could be a great film and you know just and also seeing Sylvester Stallone come back as Rocky Balboa for this film is amazing to me because you know he's gonna be the trainer he's going to be the one training Apollo Creed's son and you know I think Michael B. Jordan could possibly get an Oscar nomination for this film and I cannot wait to see Creed I hope Creed is a great film I'm really looking forward to it so yeah Creed's my number four my number four, um, this this trailer, I mean, I, I love this movie. I mean, I, I hope I love it. It looks fantastic. My number four is Everest. I cannot wait for Everest. I mean, it's just such an interesting movie. You always have that one movie per year that has amazing effects, but Everest looks like it's going to be one of the few movies that not just amazing effects. It looks like it has a great story, great acting. And in, if you watch the trailer in the theaters, it looks like one of the most terrifying experiences ever. I mean, just the fact that they're climbing on Mount Everest, the trailer almost gave me a heart attack in theaters. It was awesome. I can't wait for it. I don't really have much else to say about it, but Everest looks awesome, and I can't wait for it. So. Okay, my number four is Crimson Peak. Ah, uh, yes, Crimson Peak. Now, this is Guillermo del Toro's new movie, and the reason I'm really excited for this is because, first of all, it looks incredible. It's probably going to have maybe the best cinematography of the year, it's definitely going to have the best sets of the year, definitely, that's for sure. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It, it has a great ensemble cast, Mario de Toro, and he's going back to his old roots again, classic, you know, it's going to be like a gothic horror romance. But the thing about it, though, is Mario de Toro said at Comic-Con, the panel, that for his foreign movies, he's just the more bloody and, like, just dark movies. And this is the first American movie that he's going to do that for. It's going to be a violent, grisly movie, and I can't wait to see it. It's going to be an IMAX, so it's going to be amazing to see all the huge vibrant colors and just the dark imagery, and it's just going to be, I think it's going to be amazing. So Crimson Peak, I'm so excited for it, and I can't wait. Alright, number four is a film that was originally um, supposed to come out in March, uh, but it got delayed December. It's directed by Ron Howard. If you guys couldn't guess already, it's in the heart of the sea. I'm actually... I haven't seen a trailer for this movie back when we did our spring 2015 thing, but if I yeah. did see the trailer, then it probably would have been in my top five, and I'm happy that it wasn't in my top five because it got delayed. Now I can put it in this top five. Um, this movie just looks really awesome to me. Um, it's Chris Hemsworth. Look, he's giving a really great performance, and the effects look amazing. Uh, it just looks like a great movie to me, and I can't wait, so yeah. So now let's get on to our... <laughs> Number three. Alright, so my number three. Ah, how can I not have this childhood of mine being in my number three? The Peanuts movie. I am so unbelievably excited for the Peanuts movie. I grew up with Charlie Brown. I love watching the Charlie Brown cartoons growing up. I don't even still watch them to this day from time to time, especially around like the holiday season when it's like Halloween, Christmas. That's when I'll mainly watch Charlie Brown. And this movie looks like it's going to stick to the roots of what the cartoon is all about. I mean, the 3D animation, I remember when they announced the 3D animation, I was totally against it. 
I was all like, oh, really? But then when I saw the teaser trailer that released last year in March, I was like, wow, the 3D animation actually stays true to the animation and the cartoon. And it looks like they're going to really respect the material of the cartoon. And the voices for the characters sound top-notch. It's going to be good to see Charlie Brown again. It's going to be good to see Snoopy, my favorite Charlie Brown character. It's just going to be good to see the whole gang back. So, Charlie Brown, that is my number three. My number three is um, a film that I'm surprised that is not on anybody's list right now. It might be on somebody's list, but The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Hmm. Um, you know, this is the final installment of the Hunger Games franchise, and I've been uh, really enjoying this series, you know. I thought the first one was really good, a bit overrated, but I still enjoyed it. The second one was great, and I thought the third one was good as well. This one, it's the end all to end all. This is the epic war that we have been waiting for. Katniss is finally going to put a bow and arrow in Snow's head and say, you have failed this city. That's not her quote, I know, but who cares? But yeah, I, I just can't wait to see this movie. It's gonna be an epic battle. I hope it's like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two, where it's oh, this yeah. epic, where it's like this epic battle that we finally have been waiting for. So yeah, uh, Hunger Games: Mock and Jay Part Two is my number three, and it smells like skunk in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my number three is probably a lot of people's number ones. Um, I'm assuming it's a lot of people's number ones, um, but it's my number three. And that, of course, is Star Wars The Force Awakens. I, Of course, I had to put this on the list. I mean, who's not excited for this? I mean, you can tell people are excited for this. Every time I see a movie in the theaters, they show the trailer for this. And it never gets old. Like, it's one of those trailers that just gets better and better every time you watch it. It, I mean, the fact that they're bringing back all the people from the original movies, I mean, that's just awesome. The fact that they're doing that. The new characters look great as well. It looks like classic Star Wars. And, of course, Chewie, we're home. I mean... Who doesn't at least tear up when he says that? It's awesome. It looks amazing. And I cannot wait to see that. I cannot wait to hear that score in theaters again. It's going to be amazing. And I can't wait for it. It looks awesome. Okay, my number three um, is The Hateful Eight. Now, here is the one thing with The Hateful Eight that none has mentioned. That it's coming out worldwide on January 8th, which is kind of clever. Um, 2016, but it technically comes out on Christmas Day. I just want to mention that at one point. So the hateful eight is Quentin Tarantino's eighth movie, and I actually have never seen a single Quentin Tarantino movie. Yes, yeah, awkward moment of silence. Uh, but I did watch the teaser trailer, and <laughs> I think it looks awesome. Honestly, there's barely like really any action in the teaser trailer, and I think and it really like sets up like this tone. That is gonna be very dialogue driven. It's still gonna, I think it's still gonna have that like like that Quentin Tarantino style. And also, the movie was shot in Panavision and seventy millimeter, which I I really hope that my um uh, one of my uh, local theaters does get that. So I honestly, I just think it looks awesome. I think the cast is awesome. Um, it has. It, I think it's honestly gonna be the best ensemble cast of the year. Everyone looks amazing, especially uh, uh, Samuel Jackson. And I'm looking forward to it. It looks amazing. So yeah, I can't believe. All right, my number three is Spectre. Um, I love Skyfall, which came out back in 2012 um, very much, and Spectre just looks like another awesome James Bond movie. Um, I love Daniel Craig as James Bond. He just makes a great James Bond. Um, it looks like a lot of fun, so yeah, I'm just I'm very stoked for it, and yeah. My number two is indeed going to be Star Wars. The Force Awakens. Yeah. Oh, man, oh, man. This movie looks so awesome. I still have yet to watch the prequel movies, but I did get to watch the uh, rewatch the original movies just a few days ago, and, oh, uh, man, the original movies, they're just so great. And watching The Force Awakens, it looks like J.J. Abrams is really going to bring back what Star Wars is all about. Just recapture that magic. We get to see Han Solo again, we get to see Chewbacca again, R2-D2, and we get the new characters coming in, so I look forward to seeing how they'll handle the new cast, I look forward to seeing how the action pieces will go for the modern time of Star Wars, and the overall concept just looks interesting, and I love how the trailers don't really give away much. Like, you have enough to get excited, but at the same time, not a whole lot is spoiled for you, 
you know, me being someone that loves Star Wars, the original films, I can't wait to see how J.J. Abrams' vision will go for Star Wars, The Force Awakens. After you said your number, I know exactly what your number one is, but I might be right. I know exactly what your number one is now, but my number two, ba 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 da Spectre, mother poopers. That's my number two. Now, you're point, now, you're probably wondering. You haven't seen a single James Bond movie. Why are you playing Spectre at number two? Well, it's because this movie looks awesome, okay? This movie looks like it could be one of the best action films of the year. This looks amazing. Just by that teaser trailer, I am so excited for this movie. This movie looks just so great. We got my boy Dave Bautista in there, a.k.a. Drax the Destroyer. He's in there. He's one of the henchmen. Christoph Waltz is the villain. You couldn't ask for a better cast for this movie, and the action looks amazing. I cannot wait for Spectre. Spectre is my number two. All right, guys. My, uh, my last two are probably going to shock you that they're this high, but in my opinion... These are the two films I'm looking forward to the most. My number two is absolutely Crimson Peak. I mean, talk about an awesome horror movie, hopefully. I mean, this is what real horror is. The fact that it's in Victorian times, it's very much like the show Penny Dreadful. If you guys know the show Penny Dreadful, um, this kind of looks like the movie version of this in a way. The sets look amazing. The production looks amazing. Tom Hiddleston's going to kill it, as is me, Wazikowska, and Jessica Chastain. It looks fantastic. And I saw the trailer in theaters um, when I saw Straight Outta Compton, and it looked really creepy. And I just I felt like I need to see this, and it's awesome. I can't wait for it, and I'm hyped on my mind for it. I didn't even know much about it, but Caden was actually the one that told me about it. And after seeing the Comic-Con panel with Guillermo del Toro saying this is going to be like his other movies, and that he's going to take some risks, and that he is going to have you know, you know know really graphic sex and graphic violence, I applaud him for that. This movie's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Crimson Peak, October. I will be there. Okay. My number two is... Everest. Now, this almost was my number one, okay? And I will explain why. Because when I heard about Everest, I said to myself, wow, they're making a movie about people climbing Mount Everest and there being a big storm. So I, I kind of, I knew it was based on a true story, but it kind of sounded kind of, I mean, I mean, it kind of sounded kind of stupid. I mean, you're, I mean, Mount Everest, I mean, yeah, that's scary, like on a big storm. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really know much about it. So when I saw the first trailer, I was like looking at it on my phone, like like scared shitless watching it. I was like, it honestly looked incredible. I I seen the trailer two times in IMAX 3D, and the first time I saw it, I literally leaped back in my seat because of how much oh, depth yeah, that was, was me. in. That was me. Because of how much depth was in the 3D and how suspenseful it looks. And also, plus the director made the actors go into like real climate and stuff, real like, like basically make the film like uh, pure hell, like for like the cast members and the crew, and that just makes it more realistic and looks very emotionally powerful, which is extremely intense, and it's, it definitely has a great ensemble cast. You got like Josh Brolin, Jason Clark, Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, you got some very top-notch people in it. And it just looks incredible. I cannot wait to see it. It's actually going to be released in IMAX 3D one week early, starting September 18th, and it's going to come out worldwide September 25th. Um, so yeah, because there's like a whole like thing because Pan was pushed back, so like they're releasing a walk one week early, and then they're releasing Pan. It's very confusing. So yes, that is my number two, Everest. Uh, my number two is The Good Dinosaur. Um, as you all may know, I just adore Pixar. Uh, this movie just looks fantastic to me. Um, a lot of people say the animation isn't really that good in it, but I have to strongly disagree. I think the animation is amazing. Um, even kind of photorealistic at times that I saw in the trailer. Um, I love the premise. Um, the main green dinosaur looks adorable. And it's just like another fantastic Pixar movie, so I just really can't wait for it. Um, so yeah, my number two is The Good Dinosaur. So we're here to say what our most anticipated for really the rest of 2015 is, our Numinal Uno. And my Numinal Uno is Disney Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. Wow. Now, I, knew it. now wow. I am a huge animation fan. 
Um, I'm pretty sure you guys know that by now. And most of all, I am a huge Pixar fan. Every time I watch that trailer for The Good Dinosaur, both the teaser and the, and the full official trailer especially, I mean, my God, that's one of the best trailers I've ever seen, of course, in my opinion. But I've, I've watched the second trailer like 40 times. That's how good the trailer looks, in my opinion. And the animation looks spectacular. And Arlo the Dinosaur looks like one of the cutest characters I've seen in such a long time. I can't help but smile every time I look at Arlo the freaking dinosaur. Why are you so adorable? <laughs> uh, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, and it looks like it's going to be like this little bond between him and this little um, cave boy who comes out of nowhere. And I love this idea of what if that meteor didn't hit the dinosaurs? So it's a nice little idea that Pixar came up with. I, I know the director, Peter Hassan, is very passionate about this. And I can't wait to see what his vision brings to the table. The Good Dinosaurs is one of those movies where the more I think about it, the more excited I get. I, I think about it when I'm actually at work. <laughs> I think about it when I'm on my way to the movie theaters. I think about it when I go grocery shopping. I pretty much think about it everywhere. That's how it, damn excited I am. The Good Dinosaur is my number one. <clears throat> my number one uh, is a film... I'm so excited for it. it is The Visit. The Visit, I am so excited for The Visit. This movie looks so amazing. Okay, I can't even keep a straight face. I can't even, I can't even go on for long with this. You all know, you all know what my real number one is. You all know, come on, come on. We, come on, we all know. Open in our eyes. Come on, it's right in front of your eyes. You all know what my number Elvin one is. Elvin and the Chipmunks, The Road Ship? No. It the the no, it is Star Wars: The Force Awakens. <laughs> what Tony said about the good dinosaur is what I have to say about Star Wars: The Force Awakens. I think about this movie twenty-four-seven when I wake up. When I eat, when I sleep, when I take a shower, when I am making my videos, when I'm uploading my videos, when I'm playing video games, I'm thinking about this movie 24 7. This movie, I am so. No, it, it's not only my most anticipated movie of the fall slash winter, it's my most anticipated movie of the year, and it's my most anticipated movie ever. This movie is going to be epic. That teaser trailer, I've watched about uh, two billion, t 10 billion times, I've watched that teaser trailer. I agree with you. Besides the Toy Story films, Star Wars is what I love the most. I'm just so excited for this movie. You know, just seeing Luke, Han, Leia, and all these new other characters, and being directed by my boy J.J. Abrams. This movie looks amazing. I cannot wait to see this movie. I can go on and on about this movie, but I want everybody else to say their number one. So yeah, my number one is Star Wars The Force Awakens. I cannot wait to see this movie. Just, yeah. My number one is going to be the most surprising out of all your number ones. I guarantee none of you are going to expect what my number yeah, one is. the hologram! It's, it's not that. Um, but I will say that this was a movie I knew I didn't even know was coming out. I remember Hayden uh, told me, you got to watch this trailer now, dude. you got to watch this trailer now. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Because I knew who was in it. I'm like, it can't be that good. But then I watched the trailer and... Oh my god, I knew that this movie was the one I was most looking forward to. My number one is definitely Black Mass. I cannot tell you guys how hyped I am for Black Mass. If you guys know me, you know I love Martin Scorsese, and I know this isn't a Martin Scorsese film, but it feels like one. It has the gangster feel. It has that crime feel to it. The cast is one of the best, maybe the best cast of the year, honestly. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is going to give his comeback performance. I mean... Johnny Depp looks like, where the hell have you been? Where's this Johnny Depp been? Not white 
face paint Johnny Depp who's in Tim Burton movies and is just there to make a couple bucks. No, this is the Johnny Depp we love. He is going to give one of his supports maybe his best. You don't see Johnny Depp in this role. You see Whitey Bulger. He looks spectacular in this movie. I can't wait to see how he kills in this movie. He just looks incredible. Joel Edgerton looks great. Benedict Cumberbatch is doing an American accent. How many times can you say that? I mean, that's awesome. Dakota Johnson is going to kill it as well. I mean, she was good in Fifty Shades of Grey. She was really one of the only good things about it. Um, but this movie is really going to show that she is a great actress. Kevin Bacon looks great. The movie just looks fantastic. The dialogue is great. I am hyped out of my mind for it. I can't believe it is my number one, but honestly... When I look at films that I want to see the most, Black Mass is the one I am most looking forward to. It has everything I love in a movie, and I just, I am so hyped for it. I cannot wait for Black Mass, which is why it is my number one. Well, but okay, guys, it's Star Wars The Force Awakens. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to make some stupid speech. You guys don't know, sorry, it's Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens. Now, okay, okay, look. Okay, look. I, I could go on and say, it's Star Wars! It's going to be amazing. Look, honestly. A.K. me. Um. <laughs> Look, I everyone's saying the same thing as Star Wars. I want to talk about the real reason why this is. Because I like Star Wars. I just like Star Wars, though. But the reason it's my number one, though, is because this movie is looks like people give a shit about. Because if you guys saw the feature up there, showed a Comic-Con. It looks like there's so much, they, like, there's so much passion behind the movie. And they put so much care into it, and a lot of sets are practical. They're using CGI when they have to, and it just looks like it's. Go they're trying to make an amazing experience, and they're trying to. They're making the the best it can be, and I just credit them so much for that. And I love how they took their time with the movie, and they're not rushing it. Um, I am kind of worried about them starting, you know, rushing into Rogue One in episode eight and nine, and hopefully they don't rush those because they did take a lot of time and effort into episode 7, and plus it's Star Wars, I mean, that's also another reason. I also hope that the 3D is good, I think the 3D is actually going to be pretty good, hopefully, so, yes. And of course, we got the original cast coming back, and the second teaser trailer was amazing, and overall, guys, Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens looks amazing. Alright, my number one is Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, I mean, it's, it's fucking Star Wars The Force Awakens. How can you not be excited for it? Um, it, just, it just looks amazing. Um, the trailers, especially uh, uh, the second teaser trailer, uh, it just, every time I watch that trailer, it just gives me crazy, crazy chills. It just makes me tear up. It's just everything. The effects look amazing. They just look beautiful. It looks like a true Star Wars movie, unlike those prequels, which, God, screw those prequels. Um, yeah, I just can't wait for this. Um, so was The Force Awakens just looks amazing. Uh, all I can say is, take my fucking money now. Well, you guys, there you have it. That is our top five anticipated fall-winter movies for the year 2015. So I want to ask you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what are your top five anticipated films for fall, winter 2015. Let me know what your number one is because that's the one I really want to know. And I want to thank my guests, <laughs> WWE Fan 0599, Kevin Falk, The Kid of Awesome, and Adam Haskell for joining here in this video. And if you guys want to check out their channels, I will leave a link in the description below because they all have passion for movies. And I just highly recommend their channels because they are awesome. So, you guys, this is 22 Tiger Dude here with... WWE Fan 0599. That's right. Kevin Falk. Uh, Kayla Platt, a.k.a. The Kid Awesome. Adam Haskell. And don't forget that all of us together will always have... Yeah. Yeah. Nicholas Cage. Oh,